Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from AnthonyMorganti.com. This is episode 10 of the video series where we're taking a look at On One Photo 10. In this episode, we're going to continue our look at On One Portrait. Now, if you haven't already watched episode 9, I highly recommend that you watch that episode before you watch this one. In episode 9, I go into excruciating detail on how to use On One Portrait. In this episode, I'm just going to cover a few things I didn't talk about in that episode, and this is going to be more of an overview. I'm not going to get into very much detail about what all the different sliders do. So if you haven't watched episode 9, in the description below this video will be a link to that video. Watch that first. Now, one of the things I didn't cover in that video was how to do an image that has multiple people in it. So we're going to just do that real quick in this image of my son's band, Kill the Clock. Now, as you can see, we're in Photoshop, and you right, might remember that in Episode 9, I mentioned there's two different ways you could send an image from Photoshop into any of the On One plugins. One of the ways, and probably the most obvious way, is you go up to Filter, then down to On One, and in this case you could go, get into Effects, Enhance, and Portrait. Now if you do it this way, whatever edits you do in any of those plugins will be applied to the layer that you have active. So I highly recommend that you either duplicate your layer first or put a merged layer on top of a layer stack. That way, all your edits will be done to either that duplicated layer or that merge layer. It makes it a little more non-destructive. Now, the way I prefer to do this is I go over to the File menu, down to Automate, and then down to On One. And you can see here we could get into Effects, Enhance, Portrait, and Resize. So we're going to do Portrait. Now, the reason why I prefer to do it this way is because once you're done with the plugin, the plugin will create a new layer containing all your edits. So it is naturally non-destructive. If you don't like the processing you did once you're back in Photoshop, just throw that layer away and you're right back where you started. Now, when you open up an image that has multiple people in it, On One will find the faces automatically. And to get started, you just click on any of the boxes. So let's say we want to start with this face, we click on that box and it will then bring that box or that face forward and we're at this point where we could click on the left eye and again this is the left eye as you're looking at it not on your model's left eye and then you click on the right eye the left corner of the mouth the right corner of the mouth then you click done now once that is done you get these overlays on the eyes and the lips and i mentioned in episode nine be very fastidious about adjusting these overlays because when, if you get these perfect it really helps your processing look nice so when you're adjusting the eyes the mouth and the skin and things like that uh, on one is adjusting those exact parts of the image so do that then you could come over here and adjust the skin area and things like that and again I covered that in episode 9 and we're gonna do another image today where I'll go a little bit further in the processing and I'll give you a Photoshop tip at the end so let's say for the sake of argument that this face is done I adjusted the uh, overlay I adjusted everything everything's perfect I want to go to the next face You'll notice as I hover over the image that there's a left arrow and a right arrow on either side of his face. Just click either of those arrows and what it will do is it will move to the next face. And then you could do the left eye, the right eye, the left corner of the mouth, the right corner of the mouth, and then click done. Then you could come over once that gives you the overlays for the eyes and the mouth, which is taking a second really blurred him out because it sees the beard so what you could do then is adjust these overlays perfectly then come over here and adjust the skin area tell it not to soften the beard and then you could come over here to the panels and adjust his face exactly the way you want it click the arrow when you're ready to go to the next face and it will automatically move to the next face and you could do that for all four people in this image or as many people as you have in your image and when you're done you click apply now, I really didn't do anything here. I'm just showing you how to do an image with multiple people. So I'm going to click Cancel. 
And we're going to get back to Photoshop here, and I'm going to close this image down. Now, this image might be more applicable for those of you that have a studio where you're taking some studio shots. I took this image just a couple weeks ago, and there are no edits done to it at all. This is straight out of camera. I did crop it, though, so it is cropped a little bit. And I want to send it over to On One Portrait. So we're going to go up to File, Automate, and we're going to go to On One Portrait. Now, in this image, I'm going to go a little further. I'm just going to show you a different type of look maybe you could get with On One Portrait. It's, it's a really powerful program, um, and it has a few little um quirks let's put it and i want to show you those quirks too so we're going to click on the box so that we could now tell on one what her left eye is well it's actually the left eye as you look at it and the left corner mouth and the right corner of the mouth and then we're going to click done now once that's ready of course we're going to get those overlays and what i'm going to do is i'm going to pause the video to adjust these overlays so that you're not wasting time watching me adjust these overlays so i'll be right back when this is done okay guys i adjusted the overlays the way i think they should be adjusted and one thing i want to point out is on her lip overlay if you remember in episode nine i did a portrait of my son joe and he wasn't smiling and one thing that on one portrait will do is it will whiten teeth but you have to let it know where the teeth are and in that image i couldn't really show you how to do it and the way you would do it is on the overlay you're going to have four different dotted lines the bottom line goes to the bottom of the bottom lip the top line goes to the top of the top lip then there's these two middle dotted lines the one that is directly below the very top line goes to the bottom of the top lip and the one that is directly above the bottom line goes to the top of the bottom lip. That way you're kind of framing where the teeth are. Now you can see Courtney is barely showing her teeth here, but that's the idea. That way when you're whitening the teeth, on one knows where to whiten. And you can see even here, her finger is getting slightly whitened there, but we'll fix that in a minute. So after I do the overlays, the thing I like to do next is adjust the skin area. On one does a pretty good job of knowing what is skin and what isn't skin, but it misses sometimes. And in this case, part of her hat is missing and it thinks her fingers aren't skin when they are. So we need to um, paint in the parts that are skin and paint out the parts that are on skin. Now we're in mode, not skin. So we're going to start with that. And by default, when you do this, the perfect brush will be on so that it will try not to like go over the lines. And in this case, sometimes perfect brush doesn't always see specifically what it should see. Like you might find that you might need to turn it off. Now, for the sake of this demonstration, I'm not going to be too fussy here. If I was doing this for a client, I would uh, be much more careful with what I'm painting in and what I'm painting out. And I would probably turn on one brush on and off quite a bit to make sure that I'm painting it perfectly. But as I mentioned, and for the sake of this video, I don't think it's a big deal. So I painted out the hat completely. I went over the line there, but I'm not going to worry about it. Now, the eyebrows and eyelashes, you don't want to soften those. So you want to paint those out. So I'm going to get a smaller brush by hitting my left bracket key, and I'm going to paint out her eyebrows. And again, I, I really would be taking my time doing this the right way and adjusting the size of my brush so I get it perfect. And then we're going to do her eyelashes. Here and here. And down here. Now we want to paint out her fingers. So we're going to come up here and we're going to go to add to skin. So we're going to bigger, bigger brush. And again, I'm just going to do this super quick. So we're not here all day. Now I went over the line there. We'll fix that in a minute. And I'm going to talk to you about a little bug in the program too. Now, I made this mistake over here. I could go back up here to the drop down and change it to not skin. Theoretically, you should be able to hold the Alt key in and it will go to the minus uh, 
sign, but it kind of flips on and off, and it, and it doesn't work right. See, it's saying not skin, but it's painting as though it is skin. So that is a bug in the program. Uh, just be aware of. So you're really going to have to go to the drop down and do it that way. All right. So that's good enough. So I've I've adjusted the skin area the way I like. I'm just going to go back to adjust points. So that's fine. Now. We could adjust this like a normal portrait, just to make her skin look smooth, remove. She doesn't have any blemishes at all. No, no big deal there. Um, whiten her teeth, enhance her eyes a little bit. But there is popular looks. Uh, one popular look is uh, porcelain skin, which I really don't like that look, but it's a real popular look nowadays. I'm just going to show you how to get near that. Now, we're not going to actually do porcelain skin, but we'll get near it. And what we do now, her blemishes is... You know, you, you, everything gets like overdone for this porcelain skin look. So you're going to smooth a lot. Um, there's really no shadows uh, in this image, no shine. Evenness, uh, you know, her skin is just about perfect, but we could smooth that out quite a bit. Now, the color correction, this panel sometimes is a little buggy. Um, when I take warmth, if I go all the way up, it should get super warm, and you can see it isn't. You can see my overlay got messed up there. I should fix that. I don't know what I did there. So, all right, so we have warmth all the way up and it's really not doing anything. So if that's the case, click reset. So I just wanted to show you that because it's kind of a bug. Now when I turn, you can see now it's super warm. So to get this kind of porcelain look, we turn warmth all the way down. You can see how it washes out her, her skin. You could turn amount way up. Now, color shift, you could experiment with that and see what looks better for this specific image. And, of course, you make sure the ethnicity is white in this case. There's a drop down there. Now, for the eyes and the mouth, typically when you have this look, the eyes are overdone. Uh, the mouth would be overdone a little bit, too. She wasn't wearing, as I recall, any lipstick. In hindsight, for this look, I probably should have had her wear red lipstick. Uh, but what we'll do is, uh, for her eyes... They're just a little bit too much overdone for even for this look. So we'll bring that down a little bit. The whitening we're going to leave really high, uh, way higher than I typically would like it. As you, can, as you can tell, I'm not a real big fan of this look. Now, the whitening of her teeth is right here. And you can see how it's whitening her, her finger right there. So we're just going to pull that down a little bit to help reduce that. And... She's not really wearing red lipstick, but if she were, I could really increase the vibrance by spinning that up. So I would say this is processed. I could click here. There's the before and there's the after. You could see how that's really overdone, this overdone look. But that's some of the power. This is the whole point of me showing you this. It's some of the power that is available to you in On One Portrait. So I'm going to click Apply, and then I'm going to show you a bonus Photoshop tip. Uh, when we're done here. So it applies it. It's going to close down on one and we're in Photoshop. And you can see when I use that automate menu, we have a layer on its own and it's called on one portrait. And if I turn it off, there's before and there's after, before, after. Now one thing you might notice is when we uh, adjusted the warmth of the image and I cooled it way down, that it adjusts the entire image. It does. It, that isn't just for the skin. That'll do the entire image. And it kind of washed out the red of her hat and her sweater. Well, I would prefer that that be this red, not that red. So an easy way to do it is once you're done in Photoshop is you select the hat and the sweater and you use the background layer of the hat and sweater instead of this on one portrait layer of the hat and sweater. And to do that, I'm just going to get the quick selection tool by hitting the W key on my keyboard. It's that tool right there. And I'm just going to do a quick selection of her hat and sweater. Now, again, if I was doing this for a client, I would be extra, extra careful to get this perfect. I would refine the edge and everything. But again, for the sake of this demonstration, I'm just going to do a really quick selection and let the chips fall where they may, so to speak. All right, so we selected the hat and the sweater. Good enough. Now, if I just click the layer mask icon right now, 
what is selected stays. So that's the opposite of what I want. I don't want this washed out red. I want the really, really vibrant red, okay? So I have to invert the selection. To do that, you hit Shift-Command-I if you have a Mac, Shift-Control-I if you have a PC. Now what is selected is her face, her hands, and the background. Now all I have to do is click on the mask icon down here, add layer mask, and voila. We have the red from the bottom, and we have the skin and the background from the top. So that is the completed image. Now again, it's that look that's popular nowadays, and actually the look to be perfect, I probably should have her lips much redder. She should have Probably I should have had her wear lipstick that was the same shade as her hat and sweater, and that would have completed the look. Um, so that's it. That's some of the power of On One Photo 10 Portrait, and a couple things I didn't show you in the previous video, and a bug that is in there for the uh, brush tool when you should be holding the Alt Option key in to switch between the two, and it doesn't really work, and for that one panel uh, where you're adjusting the warmth of the image. I just wanted to make you aware of that. Again, I'll have the link for episode 9 in the description below. If you haven't watched that, definitely watch that. Also, in the description below this video, I'll have a link and a discount code so that if you're interested in purchasing On One Portrait or On One any of the On One products at all, you'll get 20% off everything in your shopping cart. So that's it for this video. I really appreciate everyone watching my videos. Thank you very, very much. I'll talk to you guys soon.